Hello, my name is Phyllis Y. Whitley. Welcome to Spiritology Live, a raw, uncut, holistic space of consciousness for self-healing where you will learn how to break your religious shackles, master and manifest your promised land within so you can start living in it today. This podcast will be based out of my number one Amazon best-selling author book called Spiritology. Hello, everybody. Call me Miss P. Call me Miss Phyllis. Just call me something nice, okay? <laughs> I just listen. I am so happy. I know some of y'all say, well, you know what? She talk about something that's spiritual, religious, and she be laughing. Hey, I got to laugh because I'm walking in my promised land. And I'm going to get it straightened out for y'all. Some of you who haven't heard my introduction, it's in my previous recording. That was the beginning. If you haven't heard it, go back and listen to it. Okay? So I'm going to go straight into it. I went a little bit longer in that one. But I'm going to go straight into it because I'm going on chapter two. It's called Battle Scars. If you didn't hear what I had to say in my first chapter called Shackles, oh my God. It was just, well, you know what I said, raw and uncut. Okay, we'll get into some of that later. But I'm here to literally get you started. I can't make you go to the promised land, but I want you to know promised land is here. I want you to break those religious shackles, the religious lies, and stop just telling yourself, oh, I supposed to sit here and I supposed to be poor and I supposed to have nothing. And you just go in and you giving everything that you have to, I don't know what kind of spiritual leader you have. Do you understand where I'm coming from? I'm not here to bash the good spiritual leaders out there. This is not a bashing party. This is about that spirit that is going through the world that is not good. It is going through people in leadership because that spirit knows how to get you. And especially when you are speaking to somebody in authority or you know they have an authority, you look up to them and you believe what they said. That's why, I don't know if y'all seen that picture years ago, I seen it, was it Jim Jones? And he had that power that really was an illusion and he fooled everybody because they look up to him as he was the closest thing to God. And in fact, when you have a spiritual leader, you put everything, you give everything to that spiritual leader, everything. And then what happens is if that spiritual leader say something that's out the ordinary or do what Jim Jones did and say, hey, listen to me, come over here and then tell you to drink the poison because God, listen, we're not going to go in there, but literally, How many of them died? And see, that spirit, that's the job. They call it the devil, but I'm going to tell you something about that later. The point I'm trying to say, it is two forces out there. Yeah, I'm going to say two forces because the strength is really you. It's how you use it. So yes, people can curse you. Yes, people. I'm not here to point out those people. It's people who live on the dark side of using their powers to harm you. But see, when you come into this space, I may tell you about it. I may point the light so you can know what's there. How do you know what you're fighting against if you don't know your opponent? I don't even know if I said that. That's what happened with the religious sectors back in the days. They seen Master Jesus and said, ah, he looks like this. He's a carpenter. He ain't nobody. Not understanding that he had something within himself. And that was a power, the power to heal the power to change, the power to manifest. And our father left it down to us. So why are you just sitting there? I know you say, you know, it's unfair. It's so unfair because if the pastors know this, why they prosper and they not tell us, hey, listen, we are talking about religious, religious, religious. I'm talking about the ones who put a hold on your spirit, a hold on your mind. We are talking about them. I'm not here to bash your pastor. If your pastor is good and you're doing good and you're prospering, go about your business. But I'm here to tell you, you should be living in your promised land. What is your promised land? 
you can actually go to the Old Testament and God lists so many blessings that don't make sense, but he lists the curses too. And if you really look at them curses, I'm telling you, back in the days when I really gave my life over, I read some of them curses and I said, oh my God, this looked like me. This looked like my family. This is what I'm going through. Let me tell you something. That's where it comes to. That's why the law of attraction, people left religion and went to law of attraction. And even then they were saying, ah, some religious communities were saying it's the devil. But see, they didn't let you know that the pastor was actually listening to law of attraction. Did they tell you that? Did your pastor tell you that? And so then you got scared. You didn't want to hear it. But then your friend, your best friend who don't go to church, wasn't trying to go to church, started prospering and manifesting. You said, well, what do you mention? I, I read the law of attraction. Don't fool yourself. God is in control and he have laws out there. Even they had sense enough to put law. It's not for you to be in bondage, but it's just saying caution, be cautious. If you have no discipline, I don't like the word law. I don't like that's a bondage. No, 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 no. Well, I tell you what, if you really feel that way, get on the highway and be free as a bird. What you think is going to happen? The law is going to come and chase you down. It's a reason. It's a reason that the law is sitting there. It's a reason that gravity is there. It's a reason that if you jump off the building, you're going to fall. Everything is already set. It's a reason that the sun come out a certain time. The moon come out a certain time. It's a reason for a season, like I said. So I, you know, I just gave you some of that. Chapter two, my battle, battle scars. It's a song out for that. It's another song out for the first one, Shackles. You have to get my book to know it. But with that being said, they put focus on the physical, being in the sin that comes with it. Sin comes with that. Yes, it does. It comes with the flesh. Okay? So they're focusing. They focus in it. Your religious pastor or preacher or whatever, evangelist, they focus on They focus on They focus on it. And then, bloom, you look up and you like, I, I don't understand why the pastor, did you see what happened? I'm not going to cover that because we got people to cover the things that they do behind closed doors. I don't understand how they were sleeping with boys. I don't understand they having an affair, but they was up here preaching and whatever. You know what? They was preaching and stuff like that. And they was telling you they were stuck in it. They was telling you what you shouldn't do, but they were somewhere behind closed doors trying to live in their promised land. And because they was doing it the wrong way, their promised land came up and ate them up. Just like the Israelites, they was in the wilderness and they stayed where they could have for years because it was a law that God had. Every time Moses went up, came back down, they was doing things on the outside of themselves. Some of y'all said, you know what? I got it. 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 I'm giving you some dessert. I cannot give you the whole meal, but I tell you what, Every episode, you are going to get a solution. You might go to sleep or the next day the solution is going to come. So that's what we're talking about. We're talking about how they have you focus on the physical side of yourself. And what happens? Religion, and I'm going to say religious spiritual leaders. It only had to be religious spiritual. Let me go back. It can be leaders. Leaders at your job. Leaders over here. Leaders over there. It can be, unfortunately, your parents, if they don't know no better. I mean, it is unfortunately people who harm people. That's why they got a system called the foster care to put them in, in the loving arms of mothers and fathers. We're going to come back and we're going to focus on the spiritual realm because the spiritual, you have your jobs, you have leaders over here, you have even gang leaders, but the spiritual is what's supposed to nurture you. And what happens is the spiritual leader who is religious and walking in that religious curse, their job is to make sure that you stay a babe. Your spirit, man, they don't want it to grow up. They don't want it to grow up. Well, how do I know that this is happening to me, Miss P? Well, first of all, it's happening to you when the leader that you under is the only one that opened up their Bible. And you don't know no scripture. They can open up their Bible but you should be able to reference that. You should look in there. Some of y'all don't even know if they read a, a, a scripture, a real scripture. You don't know because you don't even open up your Bible. 
When you go to school, they don't tell you, hey, I'm going to give you a degree by telling you everything in this book that I learned. They tell you to go forth and read it for yourself. You have to read it for yourself. That's what I'm here for. Read it for yourself. Is it a bad thing that some pastors just go read it and say, trust me and whatever? I mean, if you don't really want to know who God is for yourself, then, hey, tell me something. If you go to school right now, you had to learn something. You had to have hands-on training. I mean, did you learn because somebody just said, hey, let me tell you what's in this book on page 99, and that was the end of that? No, no, no. You need to learn it for yourself. God wants you to learn it for yourself. The sad thing about it is you will find yourself living in a wilderness. I think most of y'all, that's why y'all tuned in. That's why more of y'all going to tune in because you know so many people live in the wilderness, but you love God and you say, oh my God, I love God. And I just, I'm just torn. I, I want to do everything perfectly. Listen, I used to be there. It is still hard for me to pull that religion, that old religion spirit just hang on you and it cuff you and it handcuff you, mind cuff you. And you have to let it go. That has nothing to do. Let me tell you, I know I love God. I love him. And I heard a pastor say this before. I love him better now. He wants you to be happy. He wants you to live your life. Your promised land might not be like my promised land. You know, people say, oh, I don't want to be, I don't want to be like a pastor or whatever. I want to be poor because people will respect me more and they'll humble me. But you can't, who can you help? During the pandemic, a spiritual man named Dave Ramsey led more people to the promised land than many, 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 many religious pastors did. You know why? Because he came and he had the scripture. He had many scriptures. One of them was, oh, no man, anything but love. Now, I, I cannot say that he it was that one, but I know I have listened to his tapes. I have went on his online community webinar events. And he explained it very well about debt. Debt should not own you. I've been there. Well, Miss P, you just talking out your mouth. You know, I know how it is. I've been there with bankruptcy. I know all of that. I'm telling you, Dave Ramsey came out and I said, I figured it out. And a lot of people don't, I don't like him. I mean, everybody's not going to like you. But you wonder, are you mad at him because he led millions of people? And I don't even know the count, but I think it's thousands. And so let me not exaggerate for him. It can eventually be minions because see what happens is when he taught one person, that person is going to teach the next person, that person is going to leave a legacy and they can continue and continue and continue. That is what I said in the beginning of the book. That is what I'm trying to say. God said that greater works that you should do. Greater works because it's you leaving it to your kids. You leaving it to people. You leaving it to people that watch you your siblings, your neighbors, they're looking at you. They look at you upside down when you say, oh, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. We're going to talk about Christianity because I'm a Christian. I consider myself spiritual. And that's what my book is really about. It's about you being a spiritual, sovereign person. You know, we are so wrapped up in, oh, I'm a Christian. Everybody, that's the new thing then. Everybody, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. They go to jail or they go there. You know, I'm a Christian now. It's almost embarrassing. When you say Christian, you just put something on the back of your shirt. When you get up there and put it on social media on the back of your shirt, people are going to look at you the way you live. With that being said, they teach you this. You don't grow. Your spirit don't grow. And then they have more power over you. They pray after the vulnerability of the vulnerable. You know why? It's called shepherd slaughter. Oh, I know y'all didn't want to hear that. I know some of y'all said, I got to turn this off. I am not dealing with her no more. Yes, it is. I'm telling you. Listen, let me see what I said in my book. Let me see. Let me give you some, some dessert, more dessert. Religious shackles create religious hypocrite. Let me say it. You see, I just get choked. You know why I'm getting choked? Because it's true. Somebody felt that. Religious shackles create religious hypocrites that blind you from the truth. You are left on the spiritual battlefield. Yes, I said battlefield. Yes, I mean battlefield. Yes, without a proper instructions from your higher, highest general called God. I don't know what you call him. Some people say supreme glory, whatever you call him. 
Let it be a good name. Let it be the best name. Because see, he gave you a manuscript on winning your spiritual warfare. When you, while you're in the wilderness, the military can tell you that he give you everything you need to know. But if you don't know and you just go and you go to church and you say, ah, he said this today. And then you go home and you go into the real, a lot of y'all warfare battle grass in the house. And you go in the house and say, oh my God, I know somebody say, amen. You go in the house and you're like, oh my God, I'm going through this. I'm going through that. And you know what? Don't tell me that you don't have a warfare when you go to your job. My boss is just getting over. My boss is not doing it. My boss is doing that. I don't see, oh my God, no, I'm struggling. I'm going through. And then you turn around and you say, hi, I'm a Christian. Because you are taught that way. That religious spirit teach you to stay in your lane and, and just sit there and only use the outer part of your life, the illusion part of your life. You working hard, but you're not working smart. Okay, I can go on and on and on and on because I know y'all been through this. Okay, we're going to go to the next episode to finish it. But I have to give you some type of solution. The solution here was go to your manuscript. You must know your opponent. If you don't know your opponent, you can't take it. You know, even in the military, and I have known some people that was in, in the military, and we thank you for the military is the whole thing. If you want to know everything, when you go into that word, you're going to realize that a lot of stuff is based on the structures where the laws, you step out of it, you're in trouble. When your higher command and officer tell you things, they usually teach you. When you go in the military, you have certain jobs that you need to specialize in so everybody can come and become one, Okay. And that way, if you have to fight a battle or whatever, you know, you got this unity, you got this group. That's why, oh my God, those of you are blessed. When you got that tight bond within your family or your kids or your siblings, oh my goodness, you don't know how blessed you are. You go into the battlefield together. You can win together. With that being said, the manuscript, go forth with the manuscript. So we are going to continue on chapter two called The Battle Scars. Why are there battle scars? You can tell. You can tell. Your battle scars is spiritual scars. How can you say spiritual scars? I can't see the fine. I can't see the battle scars. But yes, it's there. You know what? Somebody say one thing, you ticked off. I know that because somebody hurt you way back then. And then you come in, you bring it into the day. And you are t- you flick at them and curse them out. That's the scar. Oh, my God. You must have been wounded. It's all there. Let me tell you something. I know because I've been there. You know, some things you can say. Let me tell you, we are always growing and learning. You don't reach it when you get your promise. The promised land is something you live in so you can go forth and wake up with your heart desires. And then you can go and teach other people how they can have their heart desires because you should not walk around and try to tell people, I'm this, and I'm that, and I'm this, putting on social media, I'm a Christian, I'm spiritual. And then yet, the next minute you turn around and you say, can I borrow $2? I have nothing against, I'm not putting down people doing a hard time of the pandemic. But I went back earlier and said, Dave Ramsey, I didn't say he was the Messiah. I say that he came out and he led many people to their promised land Because I tell you to this date that the first thing I thought about is how many times he got up there and fussed at people in his own way. He blessed them out about being debt free. I'm one of them. And when the pandemic, he was telling everybody the pandemic came out. And guess what? Everybody walking around. And what's the main thing? Well, Miss P, money ain't everything money. Yeah, but during the pandemic, guess what? Many people lost their homes or they staying in there free. They begging for help. They doing. Listen. And you know what? Many people lost their jobs. Many people are going to with the internet, don't even know how. Because of what? I don't care what you say. It's not all about money, but how you go? You go to your landlord and tell your landlord, it's not all about money. Let's shake hands. Hmm. Go to the supermarket and say, I don't have nothing to pay you. Can I pay you with love? 
Go to them and tell them, say, you know what? I am a Christian. My food should be free. No, no, it's a law here. You buy something, you pay for it. So with that paying for that, you have to have something. That's why he wants you to live in your promised land. Who can you help and you are not walking in your promised land? It's not only for you, it's for the people. So you say, oh, well, you know what? I see people just going crazy. I see the rich people falling. I see the people this. I see religious people or just money, money, money. You know, don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. Don't worry about them. You get your promised land so you can go out there and help your community, your own kids going for whomever you want to help. You want to help a state, the United States, other people outside the country. You have to have something. And when you have something and you understand why God blesses you, he blessed you so you can be a blessing to other people. It's not all about you. Your blessing is for others, but he lets you become blessed and it's his reward. I mean, once you reward your children, you want to see your children sitting up there with nothing. You want to reward them. You want to see them smile. He wants to see you smile. But remember, he will reward you and bless you. Not for you, it's for the people around you. It's for you to go forth and get another multitude and help. Do you understand? And see, they got some good spiritual leaders that will bless you what they learned. They will say, let me show you how I manifested my promise. And for those who don't, and it's all about give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. And they're not showing you how to get to the promised land. Hold on to that person. Because God never goes to sleep. He sees everything. That's why some people promised land, their ground, their land can swallow them up. So don't worry about, oh, they got this. Oh, they got, don't even worry about that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Just keep moving. Just keep moving. Just go on your promised land. Ain't nobody was happy for me to write a book. I lost more friends and even family didn't even really acknowledge. I didn't even go about family. You know, I think I got one person who read half the book. And I can't even tell you, you would think that it's supposed to be a point where you are embraced for the good will that you have done. And everybody's not going to embrace you. Everybody didn't embrace Jesus. So why are they going to embrace you? Everybody's going to be happy for you. Until next time, we will continue this. Thank you for coming into my space. Now go get your promise land. Please share on all the social media platforms. Leave a manifesting review and even your testimony or how you say I'm taking it. Don't worry. You need to let other people weep the harvest, so let them come on in, share. And lastly, don't miss your opportunity in ordering my book, because that way, hey, it's on Amazon. It's called Spiritology. I said it many times, and this is Phyllis Y. Whitley. Remember, if loving yourself is right, you don't want to be wrong. <laughs>